Double Shaman. Jamili not going to be playing that mage. It would be very annoying against Double Shaman with Double Grounding, Double Wind Shear, so I don't really blame him for wanting to go on the Moonkin. Instead, in this specific matchup, Roasties and the team of Rejects get a great start to this fight, already getting Barkskin from Envious with Triple Crowd Control. Yeah, nice sap on Colo by Roasties. That allowed them to get that Barkskin. Like you said, now full blind on Colo. He trinkets out of that. But look at these Cyclones coming in, both Envious and Smexon getting Cycloned up. That is the power of playing that double Resto Druid we see from the Rejects. Smexon is playing a Panda. That is a very powerful Panda, just smacking Roasties right now. They get, he gets some extra versatility. He also gets Incapacitate, so he can basically do an in-cap into a cap and crowd control chain by himself. We don't normally see Pandas because Orc and Human were so powerful in Legion, but their racials were nerfed, and we are going to start to see a lot of other races utilized. I'm curious to see how Smexen is going to do it with the Panda. Oh, well, that versatility stat, like you said, going to be providing a little bit more defense, but also a lot of extra damage for these characters that do opt into that Panda racial. So not that necessarily a bad option there for Smexen. Looks like uh, he's going to be going over onto Jamili, trying to do some damage. Barkskin's going to be used. Gorecki has to play catch up. There's a Cyclone on Jamili. This is good pressure for the Super Rejects. Kitty Shot now over on Nicolo. Roasty's trying to create some pressure. You know, in Legion, the Assassination Rogue on that Resto Shaman was devastating. Could be that same story in BFA. All right, this is decent damage coming out from Envious there at the back of that incarnation. They managed to get multiple defensive cooldowns. Jamili is an open target. He's got no whoa, back. Whoa. That's a lot of damage. Smexon is dishing out. That is no panda to mess with. Jamili trying to run away, gets cloned at low health. Gorecki in a hard position. He has to avoid crowd control and heal Jamili at the same time. So instead, he's going to crowd control Colo, deny any crowd control on himself with that, and start get his heals going. Finally, some pressure towards Envious. He is going to trade out the bark skin. It doesn't look like Colo is playing the Spirit Link talent, so he is going to have the mana advantage already with a significant lead. Yeah, look, he's barely running out of mana in this game in a very defensive position. We see that from Colo. Sometimes he likes to go super duper aggro. Sometimes he likes to just sit, play it safe, play far back, wait for that mana lead and uh, I think he makes those decisions quite well. It's Mexican moving over onto Jamili once again. Nice defensive clone coming in from Gorecki. He's going to be slowing down some of that damage. Cyclone onto Roasties from Envious. The three Druids in this game, man. A lot of these players are spending a lot of time in Cyclone. All right, Envious caught into a kidney shot. Nice shadow step kick. This is a great setup by the Rejects. If they're going to take a game, they need to take it now. Blind Colo Trinkets. No punish potential for the Trinket there. Colo gets out and stays in the fight. Now I would like to see a swap by Roasties. We saw this in the previous series. He can shadow step kidney shot a healer with no trinket, pop Vendetta, combo it with his team, and just burst him out of the water. So I really hope Roasty sees that opening right now and tries to take it. In the meantime, he's just pressuring Smexen, trying to buy some breathing room for Jamili. Well, I really feel like if the Rejects plays it safe, they have the root beam on Nicolo. Gorecki can move into position where you can get the bash followed up by a Cyclone. Jamili and uh, Roasties can really, really let it rip with the Incarnation as well as that Vendetta. If they line that up, they can definitely take down Envious in this situation. There's the root beam. Do they have the damage over on Envious? Roasty's going to be trinketing out. There's to a make swap. a swap on Nicolo. Vendetta gets popped. A lot of damage. But look at Envious. He's just spamming out the regrowth, and he is the only reason why Colo's been alive this long, looking for a Cyclone. Manages to shut it down. I see Colo has his HP frozen by that Cyclone. I think the, the kill attempt has been lost at this point. Colo should be able to stabilize, but that was nice. I mean, Envious is the only reason that Colo is alive right now, and that's kind of the advantage. Envious is normally a healer. He's a Holy Priest main. Holy Priest not strong right now. I don't think Envious is going to be even logging there and made a Holy Priest to play, but he has the awareness to help his teammate when he is in trouble due to the fact that he also plays the healer role. So there's going to be great support between Colo and Envious, and their defense is going to be ironclad. Smexen's still trying to build up some momentum, switching back to Roasties, trying to make Gorecki spend more mana healing multiple targets, which is a good move. It is likely that they're winning this game off mana in the late game. Yep, Jamili getting low. Coming back, get the support of Gorecki. Kitty shot on Cole, though he's caught. It'll, taking a lot of damage in this situation. Grossi still looks down to Vendetta for another minute, but you can see all three members of the Rejects rotting down, but Colo still has so much mana to work with in this matchup. Gorecki falling a little bit farther behind, but we have not even reached dampening yet. He's already around 70% mana. Yeah, Incarn from Envious is developing a lot of momentum there. Finally, a Panda Racial. It took, took a while. I don't, I'm curious why Smexon wasn't doing this earlier. Look how much pressure. Jamili's already down at half HP. I feel like if he's not doing that on cooldown, he definitely needs to start at this point. Maybe he forgot he was a Panda. Uh, Roasty's <laughs> getting bursted down below 20%, procking that tank trinket, so they could switch back to him later on. That's an opening. I don't think you can ever forget that you're playing Panda. You can see Smexon in the middle of the map right now, still putting a lot of pressure onto Jamili. A lot of burst. Iron Bark gets thrown out by Gorecki here with the thorns as well. Making 
expects to kind of second guess his target choice, but it looks like he still wants to get that damage over on his melee. Kidney shot now committed by Roasties onto Envious. They get the bar skin. Polo has no trinket available. He always has to trade that trinket for the blind. In the meantime, though, Goreki, look at him sitting down behind the pillar. He got a little bit of mana there. A good job by Envious to shut that down, not allowing Goreki to reset his mana pool. Yep, good star fall positioning from Envious denies the drink attempt from Gorecki. And man, it's going to be the name of the game as Deppany, the big red number at the top of your screen, has finally entered the fight, producing all effective healing and stacking over time. It's going to make the situation much more stressful throughout this. Polo has done a good job banking his defensive cooldowns. He can use those to stay aggressive and on target if he needs to to end the match. Roasties in the meantime needs to try and navigate a way to victory. Right now, his openings are Envious and Colo. They both don't have trinkets, so they will sit through a full kidney shot and take the entire duration of Vendetta, which is massive damage. We see Gorecki moving across the map. It gets denied by Envious. Great play from Envious. Now Jamili is falling behind. Roasties is trying to go after Smexen. You only see him as the best target. He, I guess he's traded out his trinket now, so he's not the worst. We see Solo we actually used on Jamili, trying to deny some Cyclones as Smexen is laying into Jamili. Gorecki timing some heals, though, picking him back up quite rapidly. Envious now getting swapped, too. Ton of damage from Jamili. Colo into a Cyclone. Good crowd control from the Rejects in this position. Yeah, Jamili decides to pull the trigger with his Incarnation, getting out some damage. You can see Envious just line of sight in here, trying to avoid that damage. Realty still has the Vendetta as well. Colo could be potentially be a good target. He has no trinket. He has no astral shift. They can get a nice surprise swap on a Colo once again. They need to cross the C on Envy so he can't get out the Regos. They could absolutely take Colo down with a nice swap, but it doesn't look like they're going to do that just yet. It's actually going to get rotted down. Kidney shot committed on Envy. He just trinkets out immediately. He doesn't want to mess around. He wants to continue this pressure. Also, just kind of falling behind. Uh, Roasties has been sitting on this vendetta for what I feel is far too long, and now he's losing openings. Colo's going to have trinket. He would obviously pull that with blind but I really think he could have gotten two Vendettas in the amount of time that he's taking to use one, and that's costing mana. There's the swap on Nicolo. They're doing it before the trinkets. They're baiting a trinket with this, and then they're going to blind him and kill somebody else. Nicolo is not falling for the bait. This is a scary situation for him, but because he didn't fall for it, he's now going to have trinket to remove blind, which would be a much scarier situation later on. Yeah, that was really, really smart. The rejects trying to set that up, but Colo reading the situation very, very well. Envious now with the incarnation gets kidney shot. He has no trinket available. Shadow step kick coming in from Roasties, trying to make the play for his team. Take down Envious in this situation, but it doesn't look like there's any follow-up CC on a Colo Gorecki once again, baiting them in, looking for the drink. Gets a significant amount of mana. It's actually tied up mana in this situation. Colo still fall, falling a little bit behind in terms of healing. All right, Envious getting pressured. Everyone on Colo's team down below half. This could be a time for Colo to use Ascendance. He's been banking it the entire game, and he's trying to bank it a little bit longer, but it's a greedy move. And against a Rogue, it's a risky one, and someone can just get erased in a stun. Colo caught into that stun for right now. Jamili getting pressured, though. He's not able to get any sort of counter pressure going. He just might just go down. There's so much damage between Smexen and Envious, and the Super Rejects will lead the series 1-0. And we are going to see the Super Rejects get that win. And ultimately here, we go for very deep runs here. Both Gorecki and Colo need to find a big success in this tournament if they ever want to compete against EU again in this year. All right, Roasty starting this fight with a double Garrow. That's going to be a big boost of damage. Envious is trying to slow it down with the bash. Smexen's just going to be hammering away at Roasty's at the start. But I would think that he wants to make his way towards Jamili. He's a little bit reluctant to overextend too far from Colo. They're just going to go after Roasties for now. They get a Solar Beam interrupt onto Gorecki. That is going to put his team behind. If they can get more crowd control at the back of it, they're unable to. Roasties breaking it up with a kidney shot on Envious. Gorecki should be able to start to stabilize. Roasties trying to make a move. Shadow Step blind. Colo responds with his trinket instantly. This again opens up kill potential to swap to Colo. But Jamili's the one that's just on the back foot. Gorecki seems just to be struggling. Jamili, where is your tank trinket, bro? I didn't see it proc here. I think he's not playing it. It would have been proc at 40%. Haven't seen it. He's going to go into bear, but that is a huge missed defensive opportunity here. And I wonder if that means they're going to be able to get out a big amount of pressure because Jamili's getting absolutely chunked. Yeah, he has to run retreat behind the pillar. Rodecki finally able to connect some heals, but Jamili's one of those players. He can be very stubborn with that stuff. He always wants the game to be fast-paced, doesn't want to dampen anyone, is looking for those fast-paced gameplay, and maybe that trinket is just something he doesn't want, no part of. Well, it doesn't look like he's getting out any extra pressure because of not having it. He's just got to run away, and he can't do damage when he is in travel form. So the question is whether or not he will find a payoff. Now we're starting to see that pressure come online. Smexen and Envious were taking a little bit of damage there for a second. 
but ultimately this in card's not going to pay too many dividends here for Jamili. Yeah, I mean, I like this from Colo and Envious just played defensive during this window. They know Jamili is a very big threat. Just avoid him. No confrontation. Colo is surprisingly actually behind on mana. I was expecting Gurekki to be in that case, but he's obviously been using healing waves instead of potentially healing surges during that kind of scary moment at the start of the game. Colo looking for a cheeky hex to peel for Envious. Unfortunately, he's just going to break instantly into Envious's damage. He's going to bash Roasties. Walk away. Go after Jamili. Jamili is the primary target. Enhancement Shaman, this expansion, unlike others, brings a ton of sustained damage. They're not so much about Doomwind's burst one-shots anymore. It's really just about staying on the target and ripping in for as long as possible, which pairs up nicely with the Moonkin, which is all about burst damage. So you coordinate together, you get huge hits. Envious, though, right now on the back foot as Roasties uses his most powerful cooldown. Colo has to jump in and save the day, but that's a big trade to make this early on. Yeah, you know, Specs on the Enhancement Shaman, a lot of consistent damage, like you said, but Roasties, that is what Assassination is good at. Sticking on a target, keeping up your bleeds, you have the very effective wound poison to reduce incoming healing. Anytime he pops that Vendetta, it's going to be very scary for the Super Rejects. They managed to survive the last one with the uh, Spirit Link Totem coming in from Polo. Now a kidney shot over on the Smex, and Jamili just trying to keep pressure up on everyone. It's going to be a Solar Beam over on a Colo. No root, though, unfortunately, so Colo's going to be able to walk out of that silence. Now we got a Panda Racial over on a Gorecki. Do they have the caps down out of that? A little bit of damage on to Jamili. Smex in all over him right now. Using the interrupt as well, keeping him stunned up. This is some solid pressure coming in from the Super Rejects. The dangers of attacking a balanced dude is that you give him instant cast Lunar Strikes. I haven't really seen Jamili utilizing him too much. That'd be a great way to generate a lot of astral power. We see a swap from Roasties, and the Rejects have a lot more momentum now at this point. It looks shaky at the start, but they're finding their footing. That big trade earlier with Spirit Link could be an opening now. Smexin getting cloned at low health. Colo's going to have to still recover through that. Manages to catch himself. A couple heals moves over to Smexin. Should be able to top him off shortly. Jamili just laying down the pain. Rosie's pulling back. They're going to go after Smexin as he's overextended. Colo moves next to him. Jamili switches targets, and the, the rejects are just all over the place in terms of their targeting. Colo's going to trick it blind. Overlap to Smexin's trinket. That's a massive opening that the rejects can punish in the next 25 seconds. Yeah, they can get a root beam onto Colo, followed up by potentially a hex by Gorecki while keeping Smex in lockdown. Maybe they can take him down. You know, they do have triple D curse in that match or the, on this uh, roster for the super reject. So, Gorecki's hex is not going to be super effective unless they can get triple CC out. Kidney shot now committed over onto Smex and some solid pressure coming in once again. Vendetta almost available for Rosies. That really is going to be that scary moment. Smex has to save his astral shift for that. One thing I like from Jamillion, you normally don't see Adaptation pick that often because it's really easy to punish, but against a team like Super Rejects and their composition, they have no stuns that are really that scary that you would normally have to trinket out of. So Jamillion runs Adaptation. This lets him get out of more Cyclones more often and do more damage. So it's really nice that Jamillion actually thought about that to maximize his DPS as this is likely to be a mana race for the healers. We see Incarn pop from Jamillion. There's the Solar Beam. This is the punish. They've got everyone locked in crowd control. They need to interrupt Envious. They win your Envious. Perfect set up here from the rejects they don't have enough damage to push smexin smexin over the edge that was their opening that was the one hit wonder but it wasn't enough yeah smexin held that astral shift very very patiently realizing the situation roasties wasn't able to push through with that vendetta smexin ultimately survives cole is actually doing quite well on man i think that moment where he fell behind in the beginning was from a lot of offensive urges potentially coming in. We know he's not afraid to get in when their team has momentum, throw out those purges to assist in removing some of those heal over time effects that you know, the enemy is putting out. All right, Smexin caught into another kidney shot. A lot of damage flying towards him from the rejects as Kolo in the back line is trying to time some heals and pick him back up. He should be shortly as the healing waves come in. We see Solar Beam actually used on Jamili defensively by Envious. Now Gorecki doesn't have to deal with that threat, and that's going to allow the Rejects to sit even more comfortable moving forward. Yes, Smexin caught into a full Cyclone. Envious taking some damage as well. Full falling a little bit behind here, but should be able to catch up with some effective Riptides. There's a Bash over on the Roasties. They make a swap over onto him. Smexin putting out a lot of damage, but the Tank Trinket prevails. Roasties ultimately survives from that, but they managed to get that defensive cooldown, that two-minute timer from Roasties, potentially be able to swap to him later on. Both Shamans have their Trinkets. They have Spirit Link. They have a lot of mana. This is looking like it could be a very long game. Yep, so we just started into dampening. Another stun on Smexin. Colo already timing healing waves. He should be able to tank through that quite safely. 
both Moonkin and Shaman on each team just tag teaming together, making sure they can support each other if the melees start to push forward. And it's really forcing Roasties and Smexen to be the only targets right now in this match. They managed to get Smexen's Absorb Trinket forced. That's a nice move. Now he's going to be a little bit softer if they want to commit to him later on, but they've only got a two-minute window to do it. Roasties is under fire. Jamilia is under fire. The Super Rejects are starting to build more momentum for themselves. They're pulling defensive cooldowns. Jamilia is still on the run, and we saw him just get destroyed in the first game, so he needs to be careful. Yeah, he got a race. Gorecki now caught into the silence. Has to trinket out of that. Jamilia getting lower and lower. Gorecki's going to have to play catch-up, potentially throwing out that Spearling Totem. In the meantime, though, Roasties also taking some damage. Capstone comes in from Colo on to Gorecki, pops the ascendance, gets caps done once again. Good teamwork from Snexen and Colo. Rossi's has to trade out the Vanish, the Evasion, and the Cloak of Shadows to keep himself alive. So Super Rejects getting cooldowns all over the place. All right, forcing Healing Tide and Ascendance at the same time, which means Gorecki won't have powerful healing cooldowns for another three minutes. Solar Beam committed there, but not really accomplishing too much. Jamili on the run with Gorecki. Good positioning. Should be able to, but they're swapping actually to Rosties. He used all of his cooldowns in that earlier exchange, as you pointed out, Van, so it's really good for Smexen to switch to him constantly. Gorecki's got to keep his eyes on two members of his team. Moving into dampening, it's becoming more and more difficult. Vendetta available for Rosties. What are his openings? He's going after Smexen, trying to bait a trinket with this stun, not finding it. Goes for a shadow step kick, but unfortunately, Cyclone Smexen. Now they're going to go after a different target. Looks like Envious, but he's still as barks and he's going to trade that but that was a bit of a bait now envious is a viable target for that vendetta should roasties commit it exactly i was looking an opening for roasties and the rejects and now envious is that opening if they can get cc on colo really envious doesn't have anything to keep himself alive no renewal no bark and no trinket roasties has that very powerful vendetta though smex in rotting down he trinkets out as well colo has to play catch up he has the ascendance available at being greedy holding on to it big burst out onto jamili right now activates the bark skin to reduce some of that damage 20 percent dampening both shaman's doing okay on mana but colo actually managed to pull ahead all right let's look at super rejects they're all below half and colo hasn't topped them with ascendance he's locked down in a kidney shot that was great timing from roasties removing that powerful healing cooldown from the fight which means colo has to power through with expensive heals like it healing surges right now that's going to cost him a lot of mana and that's what they need to do Gorecki's already behind they need to try and get ahead as much as possible jamili down at half roasties down at half now as both teams move into dampening their health is going to not recover as easily Colo not making any moves. Roasties looks like he's trying to gun after him, but gets cycloned by Envious. Good teamwork there by Envious to help Colo recover throughout this pressure. Jamili kiting Smexen into the open, baiting him into potentially a bad position. I'm surprised if Roasties isn't playing Smoke Bomb. I, I would have thought that would be really good punishment on Smexen, like right here. He's in a stun 40 yards away from his team, and you just Smoke Bomb him. Uh, so I'm very surprised to not see Roasties opt for that trinket option. Nice cyclone from Jamili, stalling Smexen's health bar at about 50%. Colo trying to time some heals out of this. They're not able to completely capitalize on it. Nice wind shear now on the Gorecki. That's going to put him behind. Yeah, I believe Envious has been using his innervates over on Akolo. That's one of the reasons that Cole has been able to do so well on mana. Good teamwork between them. Jamili rotting down into the bash. Caps done on Gorecki. Jamili taking quite a bit of burst right now, but Smexen got caught into the kidney shot. Wasn't able to really capitalize on that crowd control, so that was nicely done by Roasties to slow down that very powerful enhancement shaman before he was caught into the cyclone. With poison bomb proc on Smexen. Smexen just trying to get on top of Jamili. Shut him down as much as possible. Interrupt over on Gorecki. Gets locked out for two seconds. Jamili gets getting bursted down, bark skin forced out, as well as the thorns. In the meantime, Rose is also rotting down. Envy's doing a great job in this match, making sure he has pressure of all three members of the Super Rejects. Descendants just came up, but Rose is out of line of sight, and good night. Super Rejects gonna lead this series two to zero. I thought Gorecki was just, he was about to be all happy there, because Ascendants came up, but he was out of line of sight. Rosies didn't respond or get back to him in time. Super Rejects now. Super Rejects have the ability. Just one map can prove that they are the better Rejects. I gotta say that fly through into Tolveron Arena was beautiful as well. Shout out to the cameraman yeah. behind the scenes. Nicely done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Roasties sneaking across the map. It's very important for Rogue Mage to have a good start of their fight so they can swing with momentum. They're playing it patiently and trying to make sure they can nail as much crowd control as possible. We see Sap on Colo stunned on Smex and they need to interrupt Cyclones from Envious from Stealth. Doesn't look like he's even going for them. Could be a potential mistake. Smexen trying to tank it, gets cloned at not really that low of health. It seems like they're just going to switch targets instead, going after Envious, who is out in the open. Jamili tries to get a sneaky polymorph, gets denied, goes for a ring of frost off the Frost Nova. Cola dispels it and moves out of it. Nice moves from Cola. That, that was really nice what Jamili just tried to do there. That was actually, he nova him and then dropped the ring, and then he tried to pet Nova on the dispel. Unfortunately, Cola managed to move just a yard there. Otherwise, he would have landed that. That was a really nice move mechanically.
Yeah, Envy is taking some damage. Rossi is really laying in right now. Jamili getting rotted down though. Smacks in all over him. Turns his attention over onto Rossi's. We saw Rossi's go down really, really quickly in that last game. This could happen again. Caught into the bash, but he managed to pre-faint it. Faint has a much longer cooldown in Battle for Azeroth for Rogue, so they have to be much more precise at when they use that cooldown. And Rossi's has been doing a good job to his credit in this match so far. Rostis is playing the uh, Veil Die Trinket, and he has been in the previous matches as well, but I'm not sure if Jamila is using it or not. We're going to have to keep our eye open for that, uh, as he could be the potential target choice here for Smexin. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think right now they just want to kind of get to dampening, stack up their damage, and, and find a, a big lead in terms of mana later. But right now, Goreki is actually dipping a little bit behind on that mana bar as well. At least he's utilizing his innervate. It's a three minute cooldown, but he wants to use it as much as possible because these have been 10, 15 minute games. So you can get close to five innervates in a game. So you want to get it on cooldown. Grecky charging across the map. The rejects trying to start some crowd control. Jamili gets windsheared on the ring. Goes for Apollo, doesn't get it, but Grecky backs him up with a clone. Envious now in a three on two. Smexen trying to support him, trading out his trinket, but overlapped with Envious's. That's a big opening later on into this game if the rejects can get crowd control set up similar to this. Yeah, Smexen has a lot of support for Colo with that grounding totem, so it can be difficult for Jamili to get the follow-up crowd control. This Smexen is doing a good job with that, but there's the full polymorph on Nicolo. Ray of Frost on Envious, a lot of pressure out on him. Rosie's really laying in. Another polymorph on Colo. A lot of pressure here for the super or for the rejects onto the super rejects. Cola finally gets out of the poly, gets some heals over onto Envious. Envious should be fine, but that was a kind of a scary moment. Yep. Panda's good at serving and cooking food, but also good at serving and dishing out heals. Smexin saving Envious there quite easily. I know that was bad, Rich. It's fine. <laughs> you 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 hit me with your best one, Rich. Polo in a blind as Trinket, but he's being greedy. Actually, I, I like that he sits this blind because Envious has nothing. If he trinkets there, then they have a, a one-minute kill window here on Envious. So uh, the greed is going to pay off for Kolo there. It was actually kind of smart, I think, to sit that one. And Jamili is playing the Veil Dyer, just propped right there. It's finally given in to the dark side. Yes. Choosing to play that defense. And I think it's an intelligent option. It's just Ooh. one of those tools right now that's so good. The there we got it, the combo. So you can uh, drop that uh, hibernate on shamans in that ghost wolf form. So if Goreki manages to bash Kolo in that uh, in the, the uh, ghost wolf, he can cast that uh, hibernate at the same time as Jamili can cast that cheap, and they essentially get a guaranteed cheap that way as well. It was really nicely done there by Goreki and Jamili, and that's kind of been what's been lacking in their tournament today is the coordination and clean setups. They really need to get more focused. There's a lot on the line. They're in fourth place. They could be knocked down to fifth, if not even potentially further, if Casca's Angels have a good run in this tournament. So the rejects, they just need to wake up. Envious is going to be taking a little burst now. It looks like Envious wants to shut down some of this damage using that beam over on a Jamili. It's caught into the bash as well, but Jamili responding appropriately. He uses the temporal shield before the bash. They're not going to be able to find the damage. Now Rossi getting swapped too, but he's going to be okay as well. Gurecki just playing very defensive in this match so far. Just wants to extend this game as long as possible. All right, Gurecki charging across the map, trying to set some crowd control. Double casts going out. Ring of Frost, good cancel by Gurecki. Now they've got a long crowd control chain available. Who is going to trade out the cooldowns in this moment? Envious pops his biggest defensives. That's going to allow him to survive through that chain, but he won't have them for the next one should the rejects be able to find that opportunity. Moving forward, Smexin getting cloned up. Gurecki trying to stall out the damage. It does appear to be Envious as the kill target. Surprising that Rosies is still not switched over to the smoke bomb. I believe Acro is playing that yeah. in the EU region, so... Ooh. Uh, Nice what? blink CS, oh! Envious in a lot of trouble. Do they have the burst damage? Bash on a Jamili, Envious trying to keep himself alive. Nice Cyclone on the... I, I believe that was just a nice Cyclone out of the bash. Jamili's gonna not be able to do any more damage, but that was such a scary moment. Nice blink CS by Jamili setting that up. All right, Solar Beam used defensively on Jamili. Trying to break up crowd control and buy time for Colo to heal. This is a scary moment where Envious and Colo don't have trinkets. They can't get out of crowd control. Smexin has to be the one to carry the next crowd control attempt. Will he be able to save Envious or really choke here? Here it comes, triple crowd control. Perfect setup by the Rejects. Now they need damage and they need a lot of it. Where is it? It's not happening. Envious is just sitting at full HP. Smexin tossing out heals, saving the day and not even needing to trinket the super rejects shut down the rejects once again yeah they need that triple crowd control if they want to pierce through the defenses of the super rejects if smexin is able to just free cast he's going to be able to keep envious alive until much later on in the game 
4% dampening now, so that is ramping up. Definitely a factor. I think with the mage and the rest of Druida, you just have so much control. You can slow so much damage down from, you know, Envious on the Moonkin and Smexen on that Enhancement Shaman that later on in the game, they just don't get off effective damage compared to you, and that hybrid healing really is just so ineffective that you have a big advantage. This is a great crowd control chain right now by the Rejects. This is exactly what they need to do for the rest of the series, and I think they're going to walk away with it. Later in dampening, Envious doesn't survive that. They're doing good on mana. They just need those clean setups and this could easily be a reverse sweep if they can keep it up in the meantime envious has a big threat coming up in 30 seconds that Gorecki needs to get ready for they have a lot of cooldowns to trade it would be a bit of a throw away and the rejects should be taking this this game is entirely in their favor yep vendetta available they just need one cc chain on holo in the next 23 seconds Gorecki can push in and get a bash there's the full polymorph envious vendetta let it rip a lot of damage over on him do they have the follow Gorecki charges in gets sheared on the cyclone jamili gets the follow up polymorph envious getting uh -huh. lower and lower Gorecki gets the bash, and that is it. Beautifully done by the Rejects to come back in the series. That was such nice CC coming in from both Gorecki and Jamili, just really getting that coordination down. Jamili comes in on the mage, and they're able to find a victory, and now we got a series on our hands. Was the mage the key factor here, Zico? I will give them that. Yes. Yeah, Cole is actually playing the Spirit Blink talent, so he's going to be syncing up everyone's HP in this matchup. Could backfire though, like Zico was saying, if Rosie's is playing that flying dagger build, he's gonna be able to spread poison and spread damage onto everyone. We'll have to see if that's something he implements. All right, Smexen trying to go after the mage. Envious trying to follow suit. Actually, now maybe going after Roasties. We see a kidney shot. Actually getting sanctuary there by Envious. Blind was trinketed, and they're gonna go after Colo. I think this is smart. Jamili's team needs to work on just area of effect damage, rot everybody, and run Colo out of mana. So running at Colo and running at a Spirit Link Shaman is definitely the best, one of the better ways to deal with the Spirit Link talent. Evan Bolt, there's a kidney shot. Colo could be in trouble. He's in midfield. Ray of Frost fully channeled. Now Smexen is going to charge over, break that damage up a bit. Jamili blinking over, trying to slow down the game, but Roasties is really laying in. Colo trying to deflect, forcing Roasties to switch targets. Now he doesn't want to attack into that Earth and Shield Totem, but they are going after Gorecki. It's going to be a healer race potentially in this game, ladies and gentlemen. He manages to dash away and survive, but they got the bark skin and they got the trinket proc. That's going to be huge. Smexen's actually going to be playing that gnome specialization to get out of some of those frost mage snares and roots. Envious playing the dwarf, sort of soft counter that assassination rogue. So I, I like that adaptation from Super Rejects in this matchup. The new they're playing against. Grecky manages to get out of line of sight. Trinket not available any longer. Smexic can get there with Envious with a Hammer of Justice. They can definitely get a lot of pressure rolling. All right, Zico, I've got some insider information. You want to know what Trinket, Envious, and Smexin are using? Yeah. The big red. Oh! I wanted to keep it as a secret. <laughs> if you see a bunch of rockets flying out of Smexin and Envious and just erasing somebody, that's going to be what it is, the big red button. Let's see if they can get on target. They're trying to bait a Trinket maybe and then go after that person. They've been holding on to it the whole game. So that's going to be their surprise attack. Well, they forced out the, the Veil Dive from Goreki, so they actually have an opportunity to just get stun him, get him to like 40%, and then just double BRB him. As soon, yeah, as soon as I saw that Veil Dive get procced, I assumed that they were going to go back on him and try to pop that instantly. But they got to be careful, because once they use it once, it's going to be obvious that they have it. Moving on over to Goreki, he's completely by himself. Could this be the BRB? I don't think so. They got him stunned in bear form during Bark Skin. This is not the time or opportunity to do it, but maybe on the next stun, they actually managed to force Iron Bark. If they can just stay on target, Gorecki could flop. This is match point. There's a lot on the line for the rejects if Gorecki chokes. Yeah, Gorecki trying to get out of line of sight, throwing out the Tranquility. In the meantime, Rosie's taking quite a bit of damage. Jamili doing everything he can with the Ring of Frost, with the Novas, to try to slow down Smexin and Envious. This is they have decent pressure, but Gorecki in so much trouble. He trinkets out. If Smexin and Envious can get there, they can use that trinket. Execute Gorecki relatively quickly. He's trying to survive. Rosies and Jamili doing everything they can, flailing to keep their healer alive. They're all closing in on Gorecki. They've got the mana lead. They've got the cooldown lead. And suddenly this Red Paladin isn't looking too bad. The next stun could just close the game out. Gorecki needs... There's there. one big red button. There's, there's the two. other one. But Trick... Still die! <laughs> now, now he knows they have it. It's <laughs> unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Gorecki's going to survive now. He's got bark skins to rotate through, and all of that time spent for nothing feels bad, man. Let's see if they can stay on target. They've still got the mana lead, at least. That was our last hope.
Cola doing well on mana. The, they really haven't been able to get too much pressure against the super rejects. Jamillion Rossi is really having to peel a lot in this matchup. Some excellent they are going to be running over to Onigoreki once again. Not in bear form. Caught to the Hodge. Activates the Bark Skin. Doesn't have any hop healing from any hybrid, so he's in so much trouble. He's the only one keeping himself alive. That dash. Run, kitty. Run. Goreki gets away. Some heals on himself, but they turn their attention over onto Rossi's proc the trinket. Faint down. Cold Shadows used. Has the evasion, but Smexen really laying in right now, putting out a lot of pressure in that battle stance. Needs to be careful not to be in there for too long. Rossi's might be able to punish. Yeah, and Kolo's got to double the mana of Gareki, which is unexpected as he's running that Spirit Link talent. So the Super Rejects are in a great position despite the disadvantage that a Rep Paladin would normally have. The durability he gets from Spirit Link is making him so tanky that the Rejects have no opening with the pressure they build by going after Gareki. There's one big red button. Not going to get the kill, but it is burning more mana and more time on the clock. How do the, how do the Rejects deal with this? They've got Icy Veins coming up in two minutes. They've got Vendetta up in a minute. They've got no trinket on Colo, but it's going to be up by the time Vendetta's available. I don't see any openings for the Rejects. This is looking better and better for the Super Rejects. Yeah, double CC going out. Envy's actually going to be throwing that Blessing of Protection onto Smexin. That wasn't the Vendetta, though, so not really getting full value. Just wants uh, Smexin freed up so he can get back onto Gareki, who's almost completely tapped on mana. If Super Rejects can stall out this game, they can keep up this consistent damage onto Gareki. Innervate's going to be used. Gareki looking like he wants to get a drink. Smexin and Envious, they need to punish someone. They need to get on Roasty's or Jamili or stop this drink because Gareki's going to be going to full mana. I mean, that was kind of a bad Innervate. He used Innervate, then went in stealth. He didn't <laughs> pass any heals with it. That, like, that was really bad Innervate. And when he's behind on mana, I don't think he can afford to do bad Innervates. Colo in crowd control, though, trying to get a kill here on Smexen. That is their only opening with no trinket. Can they get enough damage in time? They're on the clock, as we've just said into Anthony. Yeah, Smexen taking some damage. Ebonbolt gets channeled out. Ray of Frost as well. Smexen getting lower. Polo trying to keep him alive. He still has the Earthen Shield Totem. Gorecki now getting swapped to once again. Dampening is in. All three members of the Rejects getting lower and lower. Barkskin's going to be activated. He should be able to survive this. Nice peels coming in from Jamili. He gets interrupted. Smexen's on him now. Are they going to be able to force out the Ice Block? It looks like the Super Rejects, they're just going to be splitting their target now, really taxing the man of Gorecki. Oh, Smexen is just owning Roast Tees right now. Evasion traded out in the nick of time to dodge some executes. In the meantime, though, double crowd control from Jamili and Gorecki. If they can keep it going, they can't keep the chain going. They're going to be able to top off Smexen shortly. Gorecki on the run. Jamili's rotting down Roast Tees as well. Everybody on the Rejects are in trouble. Colo with a huge mana lead at this point. The only opening now is that Envious actually doesn't have Divine Shield. They could go after him, but they're still going after Smexen, trying to punish these battle stance positions that he's been going after. Gorecki trying to sneak a drink. Smexen leaps over, denies the drink. Perfect timing. That's the advantage that they need to keep. Icy Veins blown by Jamili. What, what is he trying to get? Nice, Polly. He needs to get damage with his Icy Veins. It might be the last one he gets of the game. Gorecki caught into a Hammer of Justice. There's no damage. Jamili's just spamming Polly's. He's trying to now finally finish the job here on Smexen. They need to kill him in the stun, but I don't think it's going to be enough. He's going to survive and with that Icy Veins threat out of the way. Super Rejects can go wherever they please. Yeah, use that Icy Veins very defensively, not really getting any offense left. Still has the Comet Storm, the Frozen Orb, the Ray of Frost, basically everything available to him, conserving all oh, of that damage. Rosie's in a lot of trouble, though. He shadow steps away to Gorecki. Gorecki doing everything he can to keep him alive, but he has no mana left. There's the Hodge on to Gorecki. Barkskin's going to be used. Rosie's gets caught in the capstone as well. The Reject falling behind. Tank Trick is going to be keeping Gorecki alive for a little bit longer, but a Smexen and the Envious can keep this up time. It's going to be good night, Gorecki. Colo can start spamming Purge. He's got more than enough mana to do it. Dampening's wrapped up. Gorecki's tapped. His entire team is rotting down. It would be the perfect time for Colo to just push the Purge gas pedal all the way down to the floor. Rossi's trying to duck behind the corner. Good crowd control from Jamili. The only thing keeping his team alive right now. Gorecki manages to sneak in a Cyclone. Is this the opening that they need? Envious doesn't have very much to stay alive on his own. Colo dropping out of that clone. Rossi's trying to follow up with more crowd control. Jamili needs to get a poly, but it's not actually going for it. He's blinking defensively, trying to peel Smexen off of Gorecki. Rossi's is trying to punish Smexen as well, moving over, realizing how overextended he is, but it's all in at this point. Greg and Drink gets out. Colo's all on top of him. Purge is coming in. Rosie's is running down, and this is it. The rejects are on match point. Greg needs a miracle. Yeah, Rosie's in execute range as well. He pops the evasion, pops the fake. Can they take him down? Envious gets the killing blow before the kidney shot. Super rejects going to send the rejects packing. In a battle of good and evil feed versus the fake zebras, we're all tied up. One and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament keep in mind folks we're doing a brand new thing you have just entered in the middle of history the longest series 
that has ever been played in Battle for Azeroth.